welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I thought it'd be fun to just take a look at some recent news that's happening here in the UK. And that is the fact that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are leaving the royal family. Now this is big news over here and I thought, I thought I might as well cover it. You know, why don't we have a bit of fun? We've had quite a lot of Saturnian energy on the video feed. We've got Saturn and we've got another heavy duty Saturn video coming up. We've got Saturn Jupiter coming up. So I thought, let me put a little bright spot of fun <laughs> in the middle of those two videos because otherwise it's getting a bit Saturn heavy on this on this channel. So I wanted to liven it up a little bit and I wanted to indulge in a bit of cosmic gossip. You know, why not? Let's have some fun. Let's do something that I hardly ever do. Uh, you know, it might be a bit tabloid, a bit cheap, but <laughs> you know, hey, if it brings the views, if it brings the subs, come on, come on, subscribe, please. You know, I love it if you would subscribe. Uh, you don't have to. I'm kidding. I'd be a terrible salesperson. I can't sell anything to save myself. But what I can sell is the stars. I can always talk about the beauty of nature and the beauty of the stars. That I love to talk about. And that's what I am here to do today. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about this event because it is perfectly in line with what's going on up there. It's the hermetic principle of as above, so below. It's playing out beautifully in this case because we had a full moon lunar eclipse. And what happens in an eclipse? You guys know I do this. Eclipse. Something gets cut out, right? Something gets eclipsed out. And I've seen it happen so many times in relationships. I've seen this and I've said this on the channel before. I think it was a video from 2018 or 2019. I can't remember, but a video some time ago where I talked about a friend of mine who was in this long term relationship of many years and they were happy enough, but they weren't going anywhere. You know, it became staid and boring and he, he wasn't, you know, willing to marry her or he wanted to, but he couldn't or whatever. And she was bored and I don't know anyway. I used to hang out with her quite a bit. We'd have coffees and she would tell me about it. And at every eclipse point, she was kind of wondering, when am I going to be eclipsed out? When is this thing going to break? You know, because she either wanted that he commit and do something, um, you know, proper or that this thing end. And um, she didn't have the courage to leave it herself. Uh, in the end, that is exactly what she did. But it's really interesting how many people are in long term relationships and you know, looking at eclipse points, wondering when is it going to end? And then look at this, you know, this eclipse point has brought quite a high profile um, uh, exit for these two people, which is quite incredible, really. And, you know, to me, it's ordained by nature. Nature has granted them this ability to leave uh, because it happened, right? It's, it hasn't been just some pie in the sky plan. No, this has been executed. This has happened, right? This, is, this has gone all the way through from idea to visualization to, you know, write it all down and then boom, it manifests. So they've done it, right? And I think nature has helped um, in this instance. Now, is it a good move? Is it a bad move? And that's what I wanted to check out. I wanted to see, okay, well, how is this going to play out for these two people? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Um, and before I opened up the charts to have a look, and I've got both of their charts up on my screen, I'm going to have a look now. And what I might do is I might do little screen grabs and show you what I'm looking at so that you can see. Um, but I, it's really interesting. I looked at all the news items. I looked at all the little YouTube clips and read things about what people were saying. And I had a kind of good uh, time of investigative journalism of my own yesterday afternoon as I was looking into all this. And what I discovered actually before me bringing up the charts was I discovered my own judgment over the situation. And that was really interesting. I could see that I was being um, pretty judgmental about things. And, you know, I've been living here now, uh, well, for quite a while. Uh, I'm a citizen now and there is a part of me that is British. I mean, ultimately, I'm an Aussie and I'm an Indian. These are my my people. These are my lands. But I 
I'm here and I love being here and I yeah, there's a little part of me that's British and uh, a little judgmental part of me that was kind of looking at Meghan Markle going, she criticised the stiff upper lip, how dare she? And uh, you know, what else did I have problems with? I had problems with, um, well actually this one I had a problem with just on the basis that I'm human. And that was when she said in that one hour long interview thing that she and Harry did, I think she said, um, she said, oh, we want to thrive, not survive. And I thought, well, sorry about that, by the way. My lamp is just, maybe there is an interesting presence that has decided to join us. She said she wants to thrive and not survive, right? And I was just thinking, I mean, gosh, what is that? Like, that's an insult to all of the survivors out there. I mean, like, what? How, how is she just surviving? I don't understand. I just... So there have been numerous things that she said in that interview where I just thought, this is a disaster. And then of course the Queen has her yearly message and she doesn't have their picture on her table, so that was very ouch. I think everybody noticed that. And now, do you know what? My lamp is absolutely, I'm going to have to try and sort this out because, um, there we go, I think that should be all right. I didn't want to burn myself. I have to do that every now and then. It's a very strange lamp. It's sometimes when I do readings, it flickers like crazy. The other thing that happens is um, it has been known to go out as well. And if any of you have had a reading where I've done a reading and the lamp is blown, that's the lamp that's blown out basically. So uh, I don't know what's going on today. Sorry about that. What, it was seven minutes. Oh my gosh, let me carry on because I only want this to be a short one. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I saw that how judgmental I was, and of course, you know, I'm, it's we're people, right? I'm a person. I'm judgmental. But then what happened was I brought up their charts on my screen, and all the judgments vanished. And what I could see um, was that this event has been permitted by nature, and I think this is a good thing for everybody involved. Uh, I think that it'll be fine for these two people if um, certain things happen. Now, I'm looking at Rahu Ketu Axis for this, what I'm about to say. And uh, if you've been on my Instagram, you would have seen I would have made a little video about Meghan Markle anyway. And I spoke about um, what I can see with her Ketu placement. Now, Ketu is there in the place of establishment, uh, so she's done that. And what she really needs to do, and ideally before the age of 42, so she's pretty much right on time, um, born 1981. So Rahu is in the first house there. Ideally, yes, I mean, this whole, she needs to become a private individual. That's what I see there. Um, and that's how I'm interpreting that. Uh, she will benefit from becoming a private individual you see she has Rahu's son conjunct in the first house. That's an ego placement, classic ego there, right? The son in the first house, ego, right? Straight away. Um, put Rahu in the mix and you've got quite an ego. So hopefully over the course of the coming years, uh, she is able to keep ego in check, right? That's going to be really important. And hopefully she follows the desire of her Rahu placement and she wants to become a private individual. Hopefully she lessens ambition and she um, supports her husband. That will be absolutely ideal if she can really support him. And I'm looking at D9 chart for that. Um, and I'm looking at his charts for that as well. So it's kind of flicking between the two, having a look at everything together. Uh, I looked at her D10 and I can see that career-wise she can be a fantastic mastermind of um, some kind of venture for her husband, right? So she can definitely be a behind the scenes person, I would tend to think. Because uh, I look at her D60 and we've got Ketu in the 10th there, right? So to me, it's really D60 and D1 chart I'm looking at there, which is to say that if she pursues ambition and career and these kind of things, it won't be good for her. And if she can pursue a quiet private life where she really supports her husband and runs the family and, and um, is, is the woman at home, you know, 
that would be an amazing thing. So that's what I see there in her charts. I'm going to have a look at his charts, Prince Harry, what do I see there? I see that, um, so legal battles and all that kind of thing, I feel like he's got quite a, um, it's quite a lot of skill. I feel like he'll be fine. I feel like he'll be able to take on any battles that come his way with quite a lot of skill. I see that he's, it's a powerful chart that he's got and I see that he's got the potential to be a very powerful man. Through this event, he's definitely got the potential to um, really rise up and become very powerful. I think it's wonderful. Um, there's, you know, Rahu, in, as you go through all his Vargas, you can see that, um, I'm just going to bring them all up right now. There is quite a theme of, yeah, I mean, we can see that in three significant places. It's quite a theme of Rahu being in the sixth house of career and social work and all that kind of thing. So the kind of work he's doing is absolutely perfect, brilliant. Uh, and of course, Rahu Mars in the 10th house, which is just like his mum, and that's in D10. So that's fantastic. Um, really, really great. So that was all I wanted to say We're at the 12 minute mark. I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, the, the fascinating thing of the fact that this event totally aligns with what's going on up there in the sky. Uh, that's really cool. And the other thing is to say that when you open up Vedic astrology charts, how your own personal judgment will totally vanish. <laughs> and you'll be able to just look at and observe nature in operation and see, okay, will this, um, will this event be good for them? And, and as you can see, there's free will here too. Because let's say, for example, one of the two has, a, a, you know, a bit of a bit of ego, right? Uh, which astrologically, you know, Megan Markle does have Rahu Sun in the first house. There's some ego there. You know, if they can mm, curb the ego and work in accordance with nature, which is to which is to be spiritual, which is to work with the heart, you know, do what's right in a loving way, um, then this move is going to be absolutely beautiful. And I did see some people on the BBC talk about the fact that, um, you know, the concept of the hybrid royals could be an amazing thing for the royal family. And I think absolutely. I think why not, you know, and I think they have been wanting to slim it down anyway. Uh, I think if anything, these two are helping that out. And sure, they're going to be scrutinized and judged. You know, um, when you look at the wording of that statement, it does read a little bit like we would like to have our cake and eat it too. Yes, that's all going to be scrutinized and uh, looked at. But I mean, ultimately, I don't see this as a bad thing at all with anything I see. And, and I see that this is a um, a, a place where Prince Harry can potentially rise out of this and become quite a powerful man. And when you look at what's happening with him and his brother, I mean, I totally understand um, Prince Harry's desire to want to um, change life because, you know, you think about it, you think about being the young prince your whole life and being the little brother who's got nothing to do but make others laugh and be charming and that's it like no he's a person you know and, and and the other thing is he's the most popular royal that they have he's the most loved that they have right now um so i think he's uh i think what he's doing is is something that could pose to be difficult in a few years yeah i, I do see the reality of that i haven't clicked through the transits i haven't followed and i haven't you know, gone too much in depth, but but I do see that if he wants to make something of this situation and become a very powerful man, he can do that. Because, you know, he's showing to his own family members um, that you can't belittle me. Um, you know, I'm a person and I, um, yeah, I have, I have, dreams and hopes and things that I want to do. So if he can be hands-on with this situation and if he can build 
a new business and a new life and and you know because imagine he, he getting out of that palace he, he can have his hands in the clay of life he can create you know that's exciting uh, and I wish them well that's what I wish for them I wish that you know they can yeah have um, have some time out to just just build a nice life uh, that's all any of us wants to do Guys, it's 16 minutes. I've taken up so much of your time. It's been an absolute joy. So I just wanted to do this as a little fun something or other just to break up the content on this channel a little bit. But thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for commenting and doing all that fun stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.